And with us now, Dr. Khaled Dion, Professor of Cardiology, National Heart Institute. Hello, Doctor. How are you? Hi, Leila. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you again. This year. <laughs> yes, again. Uh, what's your first impression about Cardio Alex uh, this year? Amazing, Leila. Amazing. I loved when I saw the international community coming back together. This year, much more than ever, we've seen different ethnic groups, different nationalities coming to attend, coming to participate, not only as speakers, but as well I see many uh, people joining from many nations, younger generation, eager to learn, eager to know. And the beauty of Alexandria as well is so attractive. So I believe there is such a flavor for Cardio Alex that is different totally from any other meeting around the world. I could say it's quite a unique one. In the setting of the uh, scientific data that is presented on the one hand, on the social activities on the other hand, and the lovely venue that has been chosen, it's, I really love Cardio Alex, it's one of the highlights of the year. <laughs> okay, um, what did you present this year? Uh, I presented a few cases that I did in the uh, cath lab. One of them was a bifurcation lesion to the left main in the setting of acute coronary syndrome, a patient coming with acute MI, and he had a distal left main uh, subtotal uh, occlusion, and both LAD and LCX were uh, subtotally occluded. The patient was shocked in cardiogenic shock, and we had to treat him in the cath lab. It was a wonderful result when we opened up with the uh, stents, the uh, left main and the branches, and the patient on table started to gain the blood pressure off the uh, inotropes that we used and uh, really did very well thereafter. Then we came 18 months later with both legs, he could not walk actually because both arteries, the iliacs were totally occluded at the aorta. And so we, did, we as well uh, treated both iliacs with the stents and he could uh, move again and walk again. We rechecked what we did earlier with the bifurcation in the coronaries. It was patent and lovely. And we here can see that stents are not only a bailout procedure for surgery. Stents are now a mainstay block of treatment for ischemic heart disease, for peripheral vascular disease, and you can really rely on them. Yes, it's really nice news. Um, why was there a change in the targets of treatment for hypertensive patients? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, that's a brilliant question, mm -hmm. actually. Why? Uh, actually, in November last year, uh, we had a large trial called the SPRINT trial, and the SPRINT trial had a target of 130 over 80 as the preset value for treating patients with hypertension. And it showed a remarkable reduction in the cardiovascular morbid mortality, and that's why the, 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 the set value has changed from the previously uh, accepted for years by both the European Society of Cardiology and the American College of Cardiology in collaboration with the American Heart Association, they were all agreeing that 140 over 90 is a good target to treat, but actually they reduced it to 130 over 80 because of the benefits that they find. And actually, over the night, we found out like from 70 million Americans, 110 uh, million Americans became hypertensive. So over a night, we had to treat 40% more, and this as well if reflects on our population in Egypt and the Middle East. We're expecting that by the year 2025, uh, the average amount of people that are hypertensive, whether men or women, around 140 million people. So we're going to serve these patients on what values? On the new set values. 130 over 80 is very acceptable for the younger patients. On the older patients, there is a little bit of grace. You can actually uh, lift it up to 140 so that the uh, cerebral perfusion will be better, the overall well-being is better. So the lowest possible blood pressure that the patient can tolerate is good for him. If he starts to be hypotensive, less active and sleepy, then we really re need to reduce the blood pressure target a little bit. Okay. Uh, primary PCI or thorbolytic uh, therapy in the setting of acute MI, which would you choose? Whoa, whoa. Actually, we have 
um, a lot of data in favor of going to the cath lab in the first 120 minutes. These are the golden window. If you send your patient with an acute STEMI, acute MI, to the cath lab, open up the culprit vessel uh, in the same uh, in this golden time, which is 120 minutes, and you have a primary PCI done for that patient, there is a rem remarkable reduction of heart failure and uh, morb morbidity and mortality of these patients. And that's why we really need to change the practice from giving thrombolytic therapy to all the patients and trying to transfer them then to another PCI uh, hospital, that these PCI uh, equipped hospitals, uh, they should receive the patients and uh, as at, at the, within these two hours to open up the vessel and put a stent in the culprit lesion and uh, save their myocardium. That will reduce the number of patients with heart failure and reduce the uh, morbidities that happens with these and the implication on the social lifestyle as well. Okay, um, is there any new treatment for patients with heart uh, failure? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've been following the news and the press. Yes, this is really true. Uh, the Valsartan Naprolysin combination has been uh, recently introduced August uh, last year into the market in Egypt and it actually was uh, uh, did a remarkable reduction in the rehospitalization of patients which is very frequent in patients with heart failure heart failure is a drastic disease that is even more serious than cancers with a mortality of a 50% around 50% in 2 years and that's why we really need to aggressively tackle it for years we didn't have anything new in the armamentarium mm -hmm. until the Valsart and Naprolysin combination has been introduced and since that medication has been introduced it gave a, a big hope to patients with heart failure because it actually reduces the rehospitalization, reduces the mortality, reduces the morbidity, uh, improves the well-being, even social lifestyle. These patients become active and walking and doing their job in a, be in a better way. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Really, really nice to meet you again. Thank you, Leila. It's always a pleasure and honor to meet you Thank in Cardio Alex, and Thank all the best for you. <laughs> Merci. Thank you.